Hey team, welcome back to the DMC podcast. My name's Adam, and it's great to be here for episode three, and my partner in crime, also known as The Eclipse, Cody Hunter. Chansey, how are you, bro? I'm good, thank you, brother. Thanks for the, the good introduction as always, mate. It's a pleasure to be back for another episode. Um, I'm fired up, mate. I'm fired up, as I'm sure you are as well. Yeah, it's been it's been a hell of a it's been a hell of a week where I've tested my resolve and rubbed my earlobes a few times. So it's about when you throw it out to the universe, mate. As you know, when you talk the talk, my friend, you have to walk the walk. So in terms of personal philosophy, it has certainly changed the way I've acted and interacted in uh, more than one or two occasions this week. But today is a today has been a cracker. One thing after the other, we can have a we can have a bit of a laugh about it down the down the track, mate. But um, right. yeah, first thing I guess for the for the listeners and the viewers, thank you so much for for tuning in. It means a hell of a lot to to us. We're super grateful, uh, especially for the feedback. Remember, if you like it, remember to like it. Uh, if you want the content to continue, remember to subscribe. Obviously, it's a challenge for these formats um, when we get a number of views. You know, the first one, what we're over 350 now, which mm. is nearly the population of New Zealand. Basically viral, mate. We're viral. We're basically viral in New Zealand. Um, but the subscriptions are, are, are starting to starting to add up, and we certainly do appreciate it. Uh, we're also on Spotify. Good chance to tune in and not tune out to have a conversation with us. We'd love you to join us. That's what this is all about. This is for you, just us having a chat, being part of the conversation and perpetuating more conversations in your life, the ability to just have a chat about anything. Um, and a bit of a recap, Cody, How how's the journey been so far? I mean, we started off with show up and what are the, some of the things that, mate, that we've been talking about um, yeah, mate. Well, I think exactly what you're saying. The, the the lessons that we teach often help us reinforce our own learning, right? So we have to walk the walk. And so when you have got um, when you've got things going on, and, and we are coming up with some new concepts and ideas, it's so important then to be able to, to teach those and reinforce them, so we do them again. So the whole showing up is huge. Um, not finding excuses to not number one, maybe record the podcast. You know, we all have things going on in our lives that can get in the way: work, travel, meetings families everything right so i feel like having a partner in crime per se for this means that we just double commit to it it's easy to let ourselves down we let ourselves down every day you know you know the whole idea you're going to go to the gym you go to the gym by yourself you think shit i'll just sleep a bit longer i won't go today uh i'll train tomorrow and, and ultimately you're letting yourself down which is so crazy that it's so easy for us to do so but yet it's really hard for us to let someone else down so I suppose the lesson with that one, which is what I'm really enjoying, is the fact that we are focusing here on on the podcast, the content, but also each other, which makes this journey just really powerful. We've got someone to hold each other accountable. When we're feeling low, someone can ramp that up. And likewise, you know, it just really works well together. So, mate, I mean, every every day, every week, there's another reason to sort of look back on the content we talk about and the things we say, the things we're doing, and just help keep us rocking. And I, and I love it. I appreciate it. it. It just helps me in my journey personally as well. It's awesome. Yeah, you're right. We are we are trying to to walk the walk and the stuff we talk about. We're certainly implementing the books that um, Cody's suggesting that I read. I've been reading through and again, you know, getting through a book a week at this stage. So peeling them back and also gifting those to other people who I think may need them or would benefit from it, which is great. Hey, which is great. So my philosophy around that has changed completely. And I'm implementing that in everything that I do, um, which is which is in, which is incredible. And I think about the that that level of expectation and why we front is because of that feedback that we've been getting and people that have been saying that this has been valuable to them and they appreciated the time that we're that we're taking and the things that we are talking about, mm. which is awesome, dude. Which is absolutely awesome. And for us to to again have a conversation with each other that leads to conversations with everybody else, the listeners, the viewers, mm. and then they go off and have deep and meaningful chats with their loved ones. And how good is it just sitting down and having that extra, that, that level, that deep 
conversation where you're in tune, when you're in sync, and you're finding out a whole lot of a whole lot of things, you know, like you you go through life as we talked about last week with a whole lot of assumptions. Mm. Never assume. Go in, break it down, find out why people do the things they do, find out who they are, what makes them tick. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask deep and meaningful questions. Don't be afraid to get a deep and meaningful answer. Throw your name out into the universe, like we say. People are coming up and introducing themselves, which is incredible. Which is which is um, which is cool, you know. In the in the formats that we operate in, highly motivated formats, but also outside of that, you know, pe people in the street, people that may not feel as though they have the courage, which we will address today, to take that first step. And this is step number three for us, a eh? giant steps right, and mate. all of those little pitter patters, those hesitations. Um, we yeah. talked last week about some cool examples and, and uh, you know, we talked about the UFC, we talked about Team, team New Zealand and if you're, if you're tuned in, we're operating a bit earlier than normal for our Friday release because we've got, we've both got um, obligations outside of this that we have to front to. And our commitment is to deliver this content to you. So we're coming out early. And do you know what it was? We were saying, you know, Cody, we'll do it on a Friday because Friday's the day. And we we identified that. It's that, that, is that <laughs> yeah, it's that Friday philosophy. Everybody's amping, peaking for the weekend. And, you know, here's the argument that Cody and I, we embrace that philosophy every day. Monday, old TGIM, old big mate coming in the gym. Mm. Yelling yeah. at the top of his, yelling at the top of the lungs. So there's no reason why we can't do this any day of the week, because that's our level of energy and our commitment to that level of energy. And we want to, we want to share that journey with you. So we will drop this on the Friday. Right, it's TGIT, um, baby, TGIT. Thank God it's today, mate. That's all you have to. Thank God, about. I love that, bro. That's <laughs> awesome. Put that's that on it, a, mate. Put that on a T. Put on that tea, on a T-shirt. Speaking of teas. Speaking of teas, we've been working a little bit, haven't we, brother? We've been working a little bit on some side projects. Well, when... mate, you, <laughs> you, your, your energy and enthusiasm in this format is unstoppable. So when you get a project, mate, you embrace it, and people may notice the new logo. Have the new logo. A watch. Check it Man. out. Deep and meaningful chats. The DMC podcast with Adam and Cody. We are peaking over this one <laughs> absolutely <laughs> peaking over this um yeah cody's the uh what are you what do we what do we call you the uh the design di director oh, mate. I, yeah i suppose that's a good so i don't <laughs> do the design but i figure it out i get onto it mate. See, not see only that come... <laughs> there you go not only that mate what have, what have we got mate we've got um let's have a look we have and i'll show the peeps uh, I don't know whether, uh, but you probably can't see that. No, that's, you can't that's, see a, poor that example, <laughs> that's a poor example. But, you know, screensavers. We've both got screensavers now. Screensavers. <laughs> We've both got screensavers. Um, there, could, there may or may not be some uh, fashion fashion apparel. Why we're both not wearing hats is that it's obviously the, the feedback for the hair has been mm. encouraging for both of us. So we didn't want to cover that up. But those will be fronting be at, the, at a gym near you. Um, and on the streets, um, tank tops, tank tops. One of us has arms, the other has, has arms, but a smaller version. So we'll be parading <laughs> those. All we'll arms parading are accepted, mate. But it's super cool. It's just our way of, of promoting what we're doing and, and an indication of our enthusiasm and how we're taking this seriously. We're truly invested in it. We love the opportunity to sit and chat to you guys um, every every yeah. week. Mm. And it's pride, mate. You pride like you when you're proud of what you're doing. You're proud of the branding you're creating. You're proud of it. You want to show it off. You want to wear it. You know. You want to be. You want to be in the game. And I think the the whole awareness of the DMC and what that represents to myself also. When obviously I didn't understand what a D, what the DMC meant until you filled me in. But again, it's the intention of being able to get in those environments, making deep, meaningful conversations, part of the norm, something that we're not afraid of or, yeah. or peeling away from as opposed, you know, trying to run away. Oh, shit, I don't want to get into this just yet. No, no, we're leaning in. Let's have a good listen. Let's, let's communicate with each other. And 
again, it's just being awareness, right? The DMC. Just, just make it more known for people. Man, self-improvement is scary, eh? And people shy away from it. And you look on, I, I look on YouTube and there's a couple of people that I follow, but it's amazing how these, so, there's so many super, superficial clips about aesthetics and check, check me out doing this. And, and when we, when we talk about that, people are all over it, you know, mm. um, the clickbait is a, is a classic, you know, people are tripping over themselves to watch stuff that is, I hesitate to say mindless and there's no offense, no offense to those that are pushing some great content out there, but there's a lot of stuff that isn't deep with you in mind. And it's not challenging you or encouraging you to go deep. It's it's encouraging you to switch off. And that's probably why people like it, right? Those are the moments when we really need to tune in, when we've got time by ourselves, like we were talking about, getting to know, getting to know yourself, having that internal conversation, that deep and meaning chat, meaningful chat with yourself, knowing what makes you tick, knowing what's important, realizing who's in your life, who's around you, what environment you're in detuning or detoxing from the day firing up celebrating your successes sharing them with other people and if you are hurting in any way think about the people in your life that you can reach out to and have a dmc throw it down i'm fortunate to have people like that in my life you know um some great incidences re recently where people you know there's a whole lot of struggle going on out there and and you know assisting people through just sitting down and listening listening no judgment you know and the obligation there is just to let people talk mm. let them say what they need to say listen objectively um you know yeah I, I love the opportunity that it's that it's opened up that eye contact eh, mate? Mm. look deep mm. into the eye of the soul oh, into yes. the eye of the soul Incidentally, this background is is really making your eyes pop, mate. I just I'll just make note of that. Jeez, mate, that. It's a beautiful background, man. I love it. The ocean, mate. We're going deeper, right? That's what we. That's yeah, what we've got I like that. Today, mate. That was like you, that. mate. That's that all you. <laughs> <laughs> the first episode, we were dark. We were dark and mysterious. Oh, yeah. The second episode was a whole lot of bricks, you know, about all of those of objections that messy. we built up. <laughs> yep. yep. The wall. Yep about that constructed environment and this is we're, we're doing a bit of a deep dive mm. um mate that we were I, I was talking about team team new zealand and we were using some great examples previously mm. and for those of you who uh, didn't watch when the throws of the america's cup it's a boat race topping technology you know uh and it's a war on the water here in auckland in new zealand aotearoa um, New Zealand are one win away from retaining the America's Cup. There's a there's a huge huge history to this thing, and the 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 two races that were held yesterday, in in different conditions. The first the first race, New Zealand, I don't think has won a start yet. So off the line, mm -hmm. the talk about this regatta has been: if you don't win the start, you don't win the you don't win the win the race. It hasn't kind of run true. There's been some very even starts. Um, but they haven't predominantly won one and out of the gate they were behind and it looked like you know those moments where you go oh it's over mm -hmm. and they they conducted which was probably one of the most exciting races that has unfolded in you know america's cup history where there was a series of passes where it came down to a wind shift a little bit of luck a little bit of knowledge um and out of nowhere these guys have pieced three wins in a row so new zealand are one win away that this this incredible race the day prior where the wind dropped and these boats are on foil so what that means is they get in a situation where they're like on they've got wings under the hull and when the conditions are right the boats literally lift so the entire hull of the boat is out of the water and they're, they're planing on these wings now when they drop they of course lose boat speed new zealand dropped uh, on a maneuver and completely lost their boat speed because of the wind conditions and they were you know a leg and a half because they go up and down this leg about approximately two kilometers behind at that stage and it looked over mm. they never gave up they never gave up and eventually all it 
all they were waiting for was the other boat to make a mistake and it happened. And the other boat did exactly the same thing. They fell off the foils, New Zealand came back and ended up winning when it looked like everything was lost out of nowhere. Now it's easy in those situations, you know, you can, you can put back these examples into life. When you get down with all things appear lost, you keep your head up, you remember, you know, what, what are you in the game for? And you just keep pushing because at the end of every lull, there's that little wind shift, there's that little opportunity. If you've got a positive approach, a positive mindset, when things start to pick up and then we get that momentum that we talked about that's so critical and then bang, they're back in it. And now they're one step away from winning the America's Cup. So massive kudos to, to those guys, just for the display of mental fortitude and attitude like we say, immense pressure. These guys, you can sense it, feel it. It grips, it grips them. You can see it written all over their faces on the TV, um, on the television, and and um, yeah, it's just a, it's just an it's just an amazing event to watch. And when you do see things like that unfold, there's a deeper message in there, eh? About courage, about spirit, about teamwork, about environment. Mm. attitude well mate attitude. I, I find I, I've always found that whole individual sport so I'm, I mean that's a team but essentially a race right like a sprint race you know I come from a, a team sport like a rugby background so you know if one player doesn't do so well you can back each other up and do better but again it comes down to how that team plays against you where when you're lining up at the start of a race essentially you're just trying to do the best you can do in that race no one else is coming along and you know, like pushing you over or they're not coming and tackling you. They're not doing anything. It's just you and you're one line down the road, you know, if it's a hundred meter sprint and I'm just going to do the best I can do on this particular day. That's it. It's simple. Do the best I can do, do the best we can do on this particular day. I can control as much of that as possible. Whereas a team sport, it's not always in my control. I can't control the 14 other people or the other 15 on the other side of the field, but I can run in a straight line, for example, or work in a race to my best ability that I can do it. And there's strategy, there's all sorts to it. But um, the pressure on that is huge. And I've never really experienced that because I'm a team sport guy. So you've always got the backing of other people to kind of be like, to have your back. Whereas, hey, now you're on your own and you've got to go for it. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty inspiring aim, especially to back up when something doesn't go right. Get back up, keep on going. You've got that fortitude. fortitude, yeah, that fortitude, that that fortitude, that faith, and when you when you invest in those that we talked we talked prior about endurance sport, and when things go wrong and things go unravel after a long period of time, it's that dark dark space under the bed, that locked chest that no one wants to you know that's mm. where the monsters are, and mm. they come out you and come at you at droves and in droves, and that's when you you just have to prop yourself up and remember you have to go through that process, think about the things you've done. Think about the obstacles that you've overcome, the hurdles, what it meant to get to the start line. And that's each and every day. The start line is each and every day, right? We get a we yeah. get an opportunity to run an event over a day. And then we get a debrief at the end of the day. We sit down, what was great, what didn't work so great. And then the next day, yeah. the gun goes, we're up and we are out again. And the event known as life begins again. And we're out, yeah. we're up yeah. and expected to get tough, you know? Hey, um, a funny one on that. Eh? I thought about it the other week as well. Have you seen those videos before that are on like YouTube, whatever, of the people that celebrate victory too early in a race? You know, they come yeah. around the corner and they're like, yeah, baby. And they give it the old hoo-ha and they start to slow down. They get all panicky. And that dude or that lady behind them just sneaks up, creeps up, keeps on pushing through. You know, that's a habit. The habit of finishing strong. The habit of going over the line. Not, not pulling out early. Not calling it quits before time is up. You know, actually following through and using that time, I, some amazing lessons there, eh? And I mean, again, for your day, are you finishing your day strong? It's not how you start, it's how you end that matters. You know, that old saying, you know, like we need to finish that last leg is where the difference is made, where the change is made. Um, and uh, they're funny to watch, but also extremely heartbreaking because that's something that they're champions. Champion people do this. They know the rule. They know they've got to finish the race and get over the line. But for that, for that time... Just the, the mind switched off. Crazy. Yeah, also some heartbreaking examples where people have gotten so close and 
through no fault of their own, not faltering their own energy or enthusiasm when they just get to a point where they can't go any faster. And then cycling is a classic, you know, when the when uh, a group of people what's called breaking away head away and get a gap on the on the peloton the group of cyclists and they get peeled back slowly um, and it all comes down to millimeters they know how hard they have to work they know how fast they have to go and it comes to can come down to 100 meters there was a race recently where the guy was just pipped in the last five meters and the look on his face mm. as as he was passed by one cyclist this would have been this guy's first stage win in a major race and the look of disappointment you know, when he'd been out all day battling the wind, battling the climbs on his own, no assistance, no help. It can be heartbreaking, but he's got to have faith. I had a friend who was a, a middle distance middle distance runner, an absolute legend um, in, in my part of town, in a machine. He had two, two speeds, stop and go. Mm. And um, he was running in the time of uh, John Walker. So he was a, a miler, 1,500 and a miler. And, you know, he was one of these guys that would go out from the gun and nine times out of 10, he would run out of gas and be passed just on the finish line. But he gave it everything up into that moment. Did he learn a lesson of pacing? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but he said it was worth it for that 10th time when he held on. And that's the one he remembers the most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the one he remembers the most. Um, you, know, <laughs> you know, so you can either... you. Can, you can learn from you can learn from those lessons or you can continue just to, to press on and persevere and again regardless of the result as long as you're giving that 100 yeah. percent right up until the finish line because we all get there mate eh? oh mate the, um, that's a good one I, I, for right now the crossfit uh open is on now which is a global competition everyone comes together and performs you know three workouts in a row um i've been doing crossfit you know on and off for years but I was quite famous for having no, uh, similar to your mate, I'd come out of the blocks and my whole strategy was just get ahead and then hold the, hold the lead, you know, like, like yeah. hold the lead. And again, nine times out of 10 fail. But the one time you got it, <laughs> the one time you stayed ahead of everybody and you're like, shit, it worked. But mate, not often did it work. And that's where obviously a lot of the old heads, a lot of old guys that were in the game, a bit more experienced would understand, you know, have the whole plan they just be confident and uh one of the champions for many years called rich fronning um rich fronning jr he was famous for it he was the guy that was so consistent never rushed out of the blocks never panicked just knew his ability knew what would happen stayed in the game um wouldn't even really win every event in the crossfit games but would get lots of seconds or you know get like just so consistent where others are sort of like a win and then like 50th place sort of vibe so um I used to love watching him because he's just so smart, so confident in his ability to, to finish where he knew he needed to finish, where I was all Mr. Numbnuts just going out of the blocks like an animal um, and failing miserably. So, right. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on tight, baby. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it, it is that, that tried and true consistency and that, and that persistence. Like, he obviously knows his own strength. He's been in it a long, long time. But to see those guys you know, the way they operate and they don't waste an ounce of energy and they know, you know, they, they see it's the, it's the young bull, old bull, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I'm from the top of the hill. It's, it's all the, all that enthusiasm and energy. And we all have a finite amount of energy. It comes down to, you know, caloric de deficit or whatever we've got in our muscles, um, a, a predisposition to handle lactic acid in those, in the, in those physical environments. And it, it does come to a stage where you run out or you tap out. And you get to the your, your absolute limit, and those guys are great at doing what they need to do, but taking it right up to that point. And and you know it, it's it's like life. You don't want to slip under the radar. You don't want to you don't want to live hard, die young. We talked about that previously. Eh? You want to set a high level, um, and as you do that, you'll continue to lift and continue to continue to grow. So operate operate everything in your life at a high level um and off the off the back of i think so we were talking about reading and um the four agreements mm. and i did finish that i finished mm. finished that book amazing that's the book that i recommended to a couple of friends both young and mature yeah. uh, male and female to read it invest in it it's a book that you and i discussed that we will continue like i'll continue to read it i'll check in with it mm. 
I'll read this book that I'm reading, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. I'll get through that. I'm halfway through that at the moment. And I'll go back and I'll read the four agreements again. But always do your best is just mm. that thing that resonates with me. And, and, and a reminder team, you know, we, we do, we come out of the gates and we, we set such high levels of expectation based on that external stimulus. Mm. Being your best and doing your best is relevant to where you are in the day. Some people are morning people, they're at their best, they can absolutely be on fire. The stress that we carry into and out of a situation will mean that your best will fluctuate, but you'll work up to the top level of your ability compared to where you're at for, for that day, you know, the level you're at. So you're always shooting to do your best, to give your best based on how you're feeling, all of those um, influences, but still with that mindset to, to, to go as hard as you can at anything and everything that you're doing. And I just love that philosophy. Well, I love it. There's, a, um, there's another one that's, you know, about effort. So at the end of a class, you know, for example, you're coaching a large class, a, a really good, honest question to ask the group is how much effort did you give? Did you give 100% effort today based on everything? You know, like how your energy, how much you've trained, like, you know, straight up. I, I can't say whether someone gave 100% effort or not. I have no idea, especially with how they're feeling on that particular day. So a good question is raise your hand if you gave 100% effort today. And only those that really gave 100% know. They can only know. Only effort is judged by the person that, that put in the effort. We can assume, don't make assumptions, but we can assume based on the performance of someone that on that day, oh, that was 50%, mate, you can do way better. But we don't know what happened yesterday. We don't know about their sleep, their nutrition, their stress. We don't know about any of anything. So just like you said, in that particular time, always do your best in your current performance. And you know, it's effort. Did you have 100% effort? Yes, my score potentially wasn't as good as it could have been. But today, based off all these environmental factors and everything that's involved, that was a fuck, that was 100%. And you can't tell me otherwise. That's my, I, I know, I know. Yeah, bro. And sometimes showing up is the 100%, right? Showing yeah, up yeah, is that's the right. one. Show it, going up has been the best, man, because we've, mm. we've all done that. Um, you know, we've all done that. Holy shit, like, like today, a couple of things that are just stacking up. And they say that the path to mediocrity is paved with perfectly legitimate excuses. Yeah, yeah. And you can you can carry you can carry those objections around like bricks, and it's everything mm. in your life, yeah. everything that happens. And that's what we mean about letting stuff go. Um, and that's why the four agreements is fantastic. But it's mm. it's not about carrying that weight with you. You know, it's about processing, leaving the brick where it is. And in terms of construction, we had a massive brick wall. Now you could you could build an impenetrable fortress of excuses around you. Yeah, it's either stopping things get in, or stopping you to get out. Or your approach is to lay them into a path of opportunity, or create a staircase to lift you to something higher, to a whole new level. So be aware how you're dealing with those objections. If you're carrying them, why are you carrying them? You know, is it personal? Are you taking it? Per are you taking it personally? Has it affected yeah. you because you're taking it personally? Can you just let that objection lie, and then go in to the next day or the next process or the next workout feeling lighter, physically lighter? Yeah. Today I had no expectations. I had no objections. I'm mm -hmm. here. I'm present. I feel good enough to give it 100%. Everything that I have here in this moment go go push go mate that language a eh, the way you talk to yourself we talk about it all the time the whole you know i'm i'm the whole one you know i'm bad at names i'm i'm always tired in the mornings i'm like these statements that we talk about ourselves you know we we, we just we, we're telling ourselves all these average things about how we're feeling and and what kind of people we are right without being aware of it and creating another way around it and so one of those tools, again, as you know, and we may have talked about it, I'm a big morning, a morning journaler. I do morning journals every day. Um, I've done them for years and I've changed depending on the style because some of them I found really not useful for me. So I figured out what I enjoy. But again, setting intentions every morning. And then also, if there's something that you want to change in your life, you go along and you write out, I'm the type of person who, dot, dot, dot. So you start to do this enough to believe, you know, I'm the type of person who gives 100% in every movement, in, in, in every effort or every workout I am. Like, so you, it becomes part of your identity. But normally we're telling ourselves the negative things. I'm the type of person mm -hmm. who forgets everyone's name. 
I'm the type of person who's always late. No matter what, I just can't do it. I'm the type of person who eats bags of chips before I go to bed every night. And you just, yeah. and again, okay, you, your wish is my command. You know, what, your statements are becoming true because you're, you're putting it so, you know, so embedded in your beliefs now. So take those things and rearrange the language, rearrange the, rearrange the word and practice them more, every morning. If that's your only journal exercise, I'm the type of person who arrives on time to every meeting. I'm the type of person who um, eats good quality food that fuels me to be amazing and, and to be able to perform well. You know, really rewrite these things. And it's so powerful. Um, again, it's just about having the tools and the practice to be able to do it. And I, and again, follow up. Hopefully we can provide some of those, you know, bring those to light. But, you know, I think it's so powerful. Good yeah, or don't, bad. Don't, you don't have to attach an activity to your identity, right? Mm. Should just should just happen as we do stuff. We all do stuff. The, the fact that you're out there experiencing stuff and doing things doesn't necessarily, you know, don't don't let don't let it weigh you down. So here's a here's a mission for you, our friends, is to become your own fan club. All right. I want you to construct your own fan club inside your head. And when times get tough, you've got to get up. Who's gonna shout? You can do it. It's your fan club. When time when time gets when times get tough and you're under pressure, who's gonna be saying, You go girl, you got this? It's your fan club. You've got to create that environment inside your own head. You've got to be your own biggest fan. You've got to fight for yourself, for your space. You know, you've got to form your identity in a positive manner and eliminate all of that negative talk. Because if you carry around the ghosts, it's exactly the same thing. You know, if you carry around all these people that are going, oh, you're going to be late today. You're going to forget someone's name. You know, <laughs> instead of, yes, we can do this. We're going to front. Come on, mate. Five minutes early today. Yes, we got this. That's me. You know that picture of that kid on the beach with a fist going, we got yeah. this. That's me all day, every day. As frustrating as it gets mm. to those around me sometimes. Mm. Um, you know, attribute and attach your, ide your identity or how you feel about yourself to something incredibly, incredibly positive and see the changes, see the changes that it, that it makes today. Like mm. you're saying, today I will positive. Mm. Mm, right mm, yeah I get not necessarily to, yeah not necessarily i feel because you could feel shit and if you write that mm. down then that becomes a a mm. negative over overcome that stuff pros and cons yeah mate the um we do it all the time but some one thing that i've i've used every single day since i've read that book and again we talk about heaps say it's almost like this is the four agreements podcast but uh, yeah, 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 you know, like, yeah, yeah. like yesterday I was having a shitty day. I was having, things were happening out of my, well, not out of my control, but things were happening, happening that could really, uh, you know, bring down my entire day. And I was dealing with some, some, you know, some people that I need to fix up and help get, get through some things. I'm on my way home and I'm, I, I want to get on the phone. I'm sort of getting a bit urgent. I'm starting to get really reactive to the situation. Uh, I drive around this roundabout near my neighborhood and I hear a clunk, 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 clunk. And I'm like, oh no, what did I just, what do I just run over? Oh, nothing, whatever. Keep driving, get up the driveway and I get out and look to the side of my ute and I ran over a can of blue spray paint and it had blasted Ooh. all up the side of my white ute. <laughs> uh, lucky it wasn't red because it would have looked like I'd ran someone over. And I'm just like, I can't deal with this right now. I've got people emailing <laughs> me, phone calls to make. I've got this issue that people are so pissed off about. And so I'm out there and I've got my wife out there and we're scraping the paint off. We're trying our best to get it as clean as possible, but I just keep resorting back to the four agreements. I'm like, hold on a minute. All these people that need me right now, like I, I feel bad. And I'm like, Hey, don't take anything personally. The guy yelling at you down the phone. It's not personal. You know, this is not a big deal. You don't have to worry about it. So I just sort of, it could have ruined my entire day, but it was a good opportunity to sort of regroup, um, do something mundane. I think we talked about this in terms of conversation with, with people or your kids, for example, but actually rubbing off that paint off my white ute really helped me clear my mind and put things in perspective because I've got nothing else to think about right now. My job is to get rid of that blue paint. So while I'm doing the action of the blue paint off, my brain is processing, reviewing some things, uh, releasing tension, getting myself back into the game where I can go back in the house and take on the problems that I need to figure out with positivity and with passion and power as opposed to freaking out and so you know that was just a little reminder from a, from a book that we've read that really helped put that in perspective so these are all tools these are all experiences that can help us get through 
shitty times. And uh, that yeah, could have been like the ruin my day. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to get pulled off course, eh? Very easy oh, for those little time. things. And it's like, especially when you're driving, how many things distract you, all of those distractions, the millions of things that the body and brain has to do just to drive a car. And let alone here we are fielding phone calls and, you know, we know we've got a, we're carrying uh, uh, um, some issues maybe that from a, from a previous phone call or emails that we may have had to sort out or whether it's an, an argument or an issue. Um, that needs to be resolved again it's one of those bricks it's mm. one of those weights and eventually it has to bust so you know even if you even if you haven't processed it put it in the back seat for a little bit mm. park it mm. but yeah. then do go back and analyze it so you can leave it because the last thing you want to do is go back and pick the pack up and carry that weight into the next day or the next conversation yeah. so debrief i mean you know, for me, for me today, personally, a, a, a really interesting day. I had to break our dog out of prison. Um, our, our, our dog is now a menace to society, apparently. And uh, for a little bit of background, our, our dog is a, is a 12 and a half year old Chihuahua, about the size of a shoe. But unfortunately, because of um, someone's inability to deal with a small dog and um, flick their foot in a certain way she had a go at them we get a little uh invitation from the council to, <laughs> to um to formalize uh, uh what happened a bit of a debrief and they impounded our dog our little dog our little chihuahua so i had to i had to bust her out of prison um and it's still an under, undergoing investigation so that's how it started um and on the way to pick her up, um, I was parked, just waiting to grab some lunch on a call to a, to a friend of mine who was going through some troubles in Australia, just trying to help them through it. And someone reversed into a park and swiped the side of my car. Oh. So <laughs> they hit the car and I'm like, sorry, mate, I just have to call you back. And I got out, the guy, he was a young fella and he said, look, it's my dad's car. I said, I'm in short, he goes, I'm not sure. Um, what are we doing? And he said, look, I'm so sorry. He was, he was, you know, he was just like, oh, mate. And I said, look, don't worry about it. I said, no one's been hurt. It's okay. That's why we have insurance. It can get sorted out. I'll just go and think, give me your number and just don't let it affect your day. Just go and do what you need to do, bro. I'm all good. I said, you're lucky you probably hit the cruisiest guy in the universe, mate, because, you know, issues, zero. I don't take that. I was, you know, I was fired up about our poor little doggy. I didn't take that into the conversation. I had that firmly in the back seat. All I wanted was our lovely dog back. I parked that and then the next conversation I was helping a friend again no judgment I'd zeroed in on that and then the next thing was this car so I parked that conversation I did get back to that other conversation with my friend which was important but also saying to this guy mate it's okay stuff happens now I'm fully aware that you know there could be a significant amount of damage and like I said mate insurance will cover it it's no problem we'll find a way to work through this it's okay but you know that type of stuff and then what was it two minutes before we're going to go and hear the phone goes and mm. and and you know unwittingly or stupidly enough I'm, I'm the kind of guy that answers the phone all the time <laughs> and it was a it was a person that was having an issue from a business perspective that had a number of things that I've got that I got involved in late and was trying to sort out for them so I did you know and she said look don't take this personally I said I don't I've got involved very late in the piece and from my my point I've done all I can to actually resolve the issues which I've started to work through so that's another thing you know we go into and I didn't take it I didn't take it personally these things when a person's fired up and in, in an emotional state um, and I can only imagine you know our, our little chihuahua um, even attacking um, uh, I think 15 or 16 year old girl the parents would have been fired up and and highly charged emotionally so I get it I get where that comes from I'm a parent too they could have had an easy conversation with us of course we were apologetic um because it's I'm not saying it's it's out of character chihuahuas are defensive dogs anyway it was on our property we had a we had a locksmith there the door was open it's just one of these things but we didn't intentionally set our dog on someone you know Bonnie, Bonnie, our little, our little dog is just, um, that's, that's nature, nature versus mm. nurture. She's just protecting me. That's right. Yep. Yep. 
Um, so th that's just the head into one of those days, those little things that can get in the way that add up, mm. that stack up, that are those bricks that you carry. And again, just having the ability to break it down and sit down. Now I've got, um, you know, I've got the car parked, I'll sort out the insurance issue, no problem. No stress there. This customer issue, I'll be able to sort her out. I've asked her to write things mm. down and send it to me so I can, I can break that down. And it takes the emotion out of it, which I think is good saying what do you need what do you need fixed it's not a it's not an emotionally charged conversation it is a practical demonstration of what they need fixed and i can and i can apply logic and fix that point by point and of course and we've got our dog back now hmm. mate i love that and happy days it's happy days it's strategies it's it's tools it's things that you can use like in university there was one thing we did sports psych in university for my degree and i remember there was one thing that really stood out to me <clears throat> and it was uh, was the catastrophe theory, right? So when, when something goes wrong, so in, in relation to a rugby field, you, you've, you miss your first uh, pass out on the wing, you drop the ball. Next up, you go up, you miss a tackle, then you miss something else. And so this whole follow on effect from something negative happening continues to flow on and it's really powerful. You know, when someone has a bad game or you stub your old toe in the morning as soon as you get out of bed, all of a sudden you have a bad day. Everything just goes bad, 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 bad. Um, and exactly what you're talking about, that whole parking things or closing off a conversation or the one we talked about probably the last couple of times is the whole um, release tension, see it intention, like release it before you go to the next thing. Again, these are all tools that are available that you can practice and implement into your days to just improve your life, improve things. So you're not living stressed out all day and things yeah again brick after brick after brick after brick after brick you get home yep. your kids come home more bricks more bricks and all of a sudden <laughs> why is dad such an asshole and like you know you can't so what are your strategies hey eh? and maybe it's a workout maybe it's a walk maybe it's a hot bathtub maybe it, you've got the way to do it as the day goes like you said maybe it's a couple of deep breaths um but i think for those of us that that know that that can really we can go in that big downward spiral very quickly we need to figure out some ways to, to help that out like don't just do that don't just live life like that like yeah. try these different ex exercises like i'm a big deep breath guy i like to sh shut the door on one thing and move into the next you know my, my kids don't deserve to to take the energy of some shitty things that have happened to me throughout the day into the rest of their day you know finish school at three bedtime at 7 30 there's not a lot of time that they're they're not at school, you know, and then you come home from work and you've only got a couple of hours with them and then you're going to be yeah. a complete asshole because you had a bad day. Nah, not, not, not in my, not in my world. Hey, eh? so skills. I mean, I'm, I, I need the tools and, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and it's that, you know, if you've, if, if you come off a fiery conversation and someone else comes at you with a question and they're just going to say, you know, Oh, Hey Cody, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's that reflex. Well, yeah. that, it's that weight. It's that weight of the last conversation. They're like, yeah. how's your day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, talk it, yeah. <laughs> talk, talk it down. And 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 that same analogy, yeah. You know how um, if someone sends an email and you're going to fire up and and they say about fiery responses with emails. Yeah. Uh, the advice is always um, type it out, read it, delete it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's maybe how sh how we should process those objections in our mind. Yeah. Go through it in our mind, relay it. Okay, read it, break it down, make sense of it, make logic of it. Listen or lose. Yeah. Okay, listen or lose. Drop it, burn it, and in that in that incinerator. You know, most of the stuff we yeah. carry is again because that stuff we take personally. The other stuff that we feel doesn't affect us, we don't carry, right? Oh no, it's not affecting me, so I won't. Um, so I won't carry that round. The rest I've taken this personally, so I'm going yeah. to take this with me everywhere I go. Oh, well, you're going and, down. Mm. and every interaction is going to be every interaction is going to be affected. Um, mm. Again, saying one powerful thing you can do is like and subscribe, and that would help you Mate. immensely. And it would certainly mean a lot mean a lot to us. Um, one question that came out, you know, you guys are going to suck us in, then we're going to have to pay for stuff. You don't have to pay for anything, man. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's not why we're doing this. We're not driven by money or fame or fortune. Like I say, Cody and I are two. Uh, we like to pride ourselves on being genuine blokes. This is a passion to us. Helping people is what we do. 
you know, at, and um, I think I was as explaining to you, mate, you know, outside of outside of the group fitness, my true passion is helping people. And for me, this is the first time where I've seen an extension of that or the ability to help on a on a grander scale. And when I retire or move on from group fit, not too far from now, that I'll have this to be able to fulfill that yeah. um, in my life, which is incredibly important. And it means so much to me. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's one fantastic thing that's, that's, that this has given me the opportunity to fulfill and it feels so damn good. But the, the, the important thing here, team, is you're part of this conversation we're chatting here, we're, we're trying to have, it's not about those highs and lows and the height, this is real talk. This is Cody and I just starting off with one thing, having a chat, talking to you about a whole lot of stuff in a tone that you can digest it and become part of the conversation, sit down at the coffee table, lie down in a bed, close your eyes and just have a chat to us, have a chat with us. There'll be a format where you can do that eventually. We're certainly, um, you know, we have big, hairy, audacious goals, don't we, mate, in terms of where we want to take this, and it'll it'll take us a little time to adapt and and gain our confidence and our knowledge, and and, and we'll get that through feedback, and we'll get that through people liking or commenting um, on what we're doing. We certainly really, really appreciate the feedback thus far. The thing that I really love, bro is that the levels of conversations that I'm having with people outside of this format that feel comfortable to talk to us now, that feel comfortable to talk to me. And I wanted to refer to that um, one really important thing. And it comes down to the, it comes down to power and, and our own personal power, the power that we have within us. And this person was doing super well professionally. Um, over a long term, had been working in a job, a variety of jobs, doing a variety of different things. Very well respected, very well loved. And this person had built uh, an identity, was renowned for energy and enthusiasm and getting shit done. And they put themselves in pole position um, to be highly sought after in, 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 the work, in the workplace, in the work market, which is great. I had a conversation with this person and they were talking about, about confidence and also that looking back on their lives and the things, the hurdles that they have had to overcome and how it had led them to this place. And at times, you know, when you get approached with a problem or an issue or a stall that have had to find a way or this power and my, my response was simple, and I want this message to resonate with everybody. You have always had the power. It's not just an event that has suddenly given you the superpower. It's within us, and it's within us all. All it is is just that switch that has recognized it and utilized that power that we all have to be outstanding. How many times we've talked about it before? Uh, online or in real life, do we see these incredible superhuman events, or um, where you know people lift people lifting cars? Incredible superhuman. What's the common goal there? Human. It's in all of us. It's absolutely in all of us. Remember, we start on this earth, referring back to our book, mate, as a blank canvas we are born nude okay we like a computer okay with a blank memory with a blank mind and we are fed a whole lot of stuff and a lot of it is limitations a lot of it is historical a lot of a lot of it is a limitation that someone else has carried a weight that someone else has carried and passed it on to you now imagine if you were brought up in a world where there were no limitations. Imagine if you were brought up by a parent that spoke French, you'd be speaking French now. If you were, if you were brought up by a violinist, you'd be playing the violin. You know, if you were brought up by a chess master, you would be a chess master. These are the things that you've got to realize and appreciate. And it's not over, it's not done. You still have the ability 
you just got to have the willpower and be prepared to do the work to get there. If you start learning French or Māori or any language you decide today, eventually you will speak that language with a commitment to do it. If you start trying to learn to play chess today, eventually you will become a master if you commit yourself to it. If you want to play the violin starting today, eventually you'll be able to play the violin with a commitment to it. We are super computers. The greatest machine ever put on this earth is you and me. Realize it, appreciate it. Man, the, the limitations that are forced upon us again, guys, break out of that today. Take the responsibility because every decision that you make from here is on you. All right? It is on you. Do you want to be that supercomputer? Are there things that you want to achieve? Are there things that are holding you back that is just legacy, that is a brick? Put it down, learn or lose it, and then make the change because it is up to you. You have always had the power. It has always been in you, and now it is up to you. I told you we'd go deep. That is why <laughs> they are a bush. That is why we have Mate. the ocean in the background. Mate, I actually that is, oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. I warmed Mate. up there. Mate, I'll that was up. um mate, it's so good. That and you know what? I think I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to mess with that, Mr. Rigby. That's fucking beautiful, mate. Um thank you. I I I think, yeah, that's I think that's a good probably a good spot to probably finish today's podcast on. I don't want to I don't want to blur that out. That's our that's our teaser for next week, mate. Um, but yeah, that's so good. And I mean, just following on, I had an experience in the gym just recently where, the, where we were doing a, a technical movement, a power clean. And the, the, the female, she said to me, this is just so hard to do. Like, I just can't figure this out. And I said, hey, at some stage, one foot in front of the other was hard to do. You couldn't figure that out. Well, and you figured that out. You know, walking, walking wasn't something that you just were born being able to do. You had to figure it all out. You had to do it more and more and more. You had to fall over on your face, get back up, try it again. But again, because it was an intention, it was your target, it was your goal, it was something you always wanted to do. What did you do? You kept trying until all of a sudden you're running, climbing, jumping, hopping. All these things are happening. So, um, yeah, mate, I love that. I'm inspired now to, to get off here and get my guitar going again and get, get back to work. Let's do it, mate. Let's set, <laughs> let's set some big, hairy, audacious goals outside of that. Because again, show up, realize the power within you. Put yourself in an environment where you know you will be successful. And if you're not, check yourself. Are the people mm. in that environment along for the ride on your coattails promoting poor habits or good habits? Yeah. Is it positive? Like, Is it good for you? You put yourself in that position. You make the decision to be in that position. The power is yours. The responsibility is ours. What we need to do is make this world a way better place to live in and just mm. level it up, be kinder, you know, and uh, make our our new tagline. Oof. Hit him, mate. Hit him. Who cares wins? Who cares Who wins? Who cares wins? Mate. Mate, yeah. There'll be more of that. Uh, if you check out, if you do go to our YouTube channel, when you subscribe, You'll be able to see that as, as part of the channel up now because it is a it's a beautiful underlying tagline that um we just need to be more aware of. We need to care more. Caring, you know, that's how we're going to win this game, this game of improvement, this game of life. So um, again, we're bringing this all to awareness. Another thing on there is that we're currently in the process of putting together our Instagram account. Um, the reason I want to work on that is to really get more engagement from from you guys. To get more listeners to be able to post questions, to interact with us more, um, for us to do some some sneaky live monologues wherever we are when we feel like sharing what's going on. Um, again, you're having a taste through our weekly podcast. This, this will come out every single week, no matter what. We'll make a way, but to get a little bit more out there, to interact with you more and more and more, this is what's happening in the future. We're working on it. Um, we're not going to release it just yet, but we are in the we're in the process. We're getting it up there. We want to make it easy. We need to make our environment easy for us to succeed. 
If there are more ways to touch base with us, then we will all win. We can win by supplying more information and communicating more with you. Um, so that's that's what we're going to do. So I'm excited about that. That won't be coming out. That'll be pretty pretty soon. Yeah, man, super cool on the work that was done with that with that logo. I mean, it looks sick. It looks amazing. We we are really proud mm. to carry that, and we'll be really proud to wear it. We're super proud to share it. And again, who cares wins? And if you think for a second in your life you don't have anyone that cares, guess again, because it's us, all right? We care enough to put this content out about you, all right? Okay, and that binds us together. From here on in, we're going to continue to have a conversation. Like I say, like, subscribe, mm -hmm. talk talk to us, give us your feedback. Insta is coming. Um, we want to share this journey with you. We want the best for you. Go out, show up, front up recognize realize the power make those positive decisions for yourself impact those around you be positive even though the world may be raining down a hail of shit at times you know pop up the positive umbrella use us when you need to um we we, we love you guys heaps so thank you again beautiful i love it team hey again just really writing i'm um, thank you all for tuning in again if you made it through to this uh, part of the podcast we commend you thank you so much Legends. for staying with us this long that's so good um please yeah a share a like a follow a comment uh, i i really want to hear some comments um i want to hear some feedback some questions anything will be really awesome so don't be afraid to reach out to us whether it's through a direct message or through through any means if you know us you maybe you can get it. you if you want to contact us you can find a way you'll find a way so um again thank you all so much for tuning in on our episode number Three. Three. Ha, we're making we're making moves, brother. Three's my lucky number, mate. Let this Three's be lucky. lucky. Let this be lucky for you all. Um, <laughs> can't wait to chat to you again. Reach out to us, sing out to us, um, come and say hi, have those deep and meaningful chats. Let us know how they're going. Go deep. Mm -hmm. Eye contact, make it meaningful, make meaningful connections. Um, and yeah, mate, let's all have a laugh. Let's all love as hard as we can. Let's all do the best we can to be the best we can. Who cares? Wins DMC podcast with Adam and Cody. That is us. Love you guys. Thanks so much. Peace. Peace. <laughs>